Hello and Aloha Pa to everyone. Today is 28th of the May. Time is 11.57. I spoke last night about one of the attributes, the spiritual attributes of God that can be possessed and conferred upon the spiritual people who go through uh, this process and actually possess this spirit of God, this quality called love. In the Baha'i faith, we don't believe there is Satan. We don't believe that. Abdul Baha says, lack of light is darkness. There's no source for darkness. In this room, if there's no light, which we know where it comes from, then there will be darkness. The same way lack of God is Satan. Satan is not a creature made by God. God does not make things that are bad. But there's another definition of bad. He says bad is a bad relationship. Like the poison of the snake is good for poison for the snakes, but it's not good for us. In the same manner, we say love exists. Lack of love that can create certain uh, negative attributes, which are lacking. Uh, usually we say, okay, love is opposite to hate. If you hate, you don't love. If you don't love, then you hate. But that's not the case. A lot of time, you're not in love, you don't love, but you also don't hate anybody. So. The negative, the negativity that happens when there's no love and a lack thereof is not hate, as my dictionary might suggest. I might suggest in my opinion, there are other things. When there's carnal desire, when there's passion, then there can't be love. So lack of love that creates the passion the carnal desire lack of love also creates fear when people are afraid or petrified they're always worried and lack of love also creates a lot of material desires towards many many things because love is uh, the essence, basically, at the very source of all these attributes and quality, lack of that, I can create a lot of, lot of a spiritual problem. Nobody is completely lacking love. Nobody. And that, in the same token, nobody is completely, you know, possessed by love. That would be Baha'u'llah. So, we're just going to speak tonight about what happens if there's no love. What is uh, lack of love, what, it, what can it cause? Uh, one of them I'm going to talk about is the carnal desire, passion, sex. Of course, this is not a reference only to sex, no. It's not just a body of a man or a woman that if you engage in it and you call that carnal desire, not really. It's that passion that we have with all these materials. For example, money. Some people are so attached to have the money, it's like making love with the money. Every day, they're counting how much they have how much was yesterday and after the day that they didn't make any money they consider that that's a loss because if you make money and you can't spend it then you're not generous but as love is all about giving if you can't give and you're just a like a slot machine that only takes the money from these gamblers doesn't give away very little so at the end of the day the machine wins so, some people 
they have such a love towards the money that for them it's just a, uh, is a, is a hobby. That's the only thing they know. It's not about what I'm going to do with the money. It's just that I have to make it, make it, make it, make it. But they have no time even to spend it. Plus, it's for them very, very hard to spend. If you end up just making money, and then it becomes, you know, first you like it, it's a mood, as I said, then it becomes a habit, then it becomes an ethic, then it becomes an action of making money. There you got to create uh, um, a huge lack of love in you because you just love this money making. It becomes an attribute, it's a negative attribute in you. So what happens? When you make money, you have to also learn to spend it. If you don't do it, it's like a water coming from a river in a lagoon. It doesn't go anywhere. It ends up becomes foul, smell, stinky, and there's no movement. Even the knowledge is like this. You get a lot of knowledge, but you don't let it go. It's not, you don't teach it, you don't give it to others. It just becomes too much in you and um, you become a kind of uh, solitary individual that's all of this in the book, reading, learning, but never sharing. Because if you just try to learn money, uh, make money, make money, make money, your stomach is bigger and bigger and bigger, um, and you never spend it. Because always you're hungrier than what you put into the stomach. It gives you false, you know, reading. You think you're so poor. The guy I knew says, oh, $15 million, I think he had. He says, oh, Mr. Tamori, last night I lost $2 million. I said, oh, my God, so you lost your house? He said, no, but how? Well, you know, the stock market went down or the Canadian dollar in change, exchange with the American dollar, I lost $2 million last night. I said, well, you know, when tomorrow you win. You're attached to the money, money goes ups and downs, wherever the money goes, it takes you. Stay away from it, possess, don't possess it, use it. But he can't. So anyways, as a result of this, the person becomes a stingy, you know. It just, just does not want to spend any money. It becomes basically the servant of the money. Every time I want to spend the money, money says, no, 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 don't, don't, that's forbidden. You know that you shouldn't touch me. You just have to increase more and more and more and more. Totally is like the stories of the movie they make, you know, that some beast enslaves somebody to bring him, you know, things like Dracula, for example. It is the same thing, but it, this is real, though. Because you just keep adding to this damn money. As a result, you become a person with a lot of fear, because always you have fear that you don't have enough. Therefore, you become a stingy, and you kick the love right out of your heart fully and completely. You become a Scrooge. What can save you? The story is nice, this, this story of, you know, Christmas Carol. But in reality, that doesn't happen. So you die with all your tunnel vision that you have only money. So lack of love creates fear. Okay. So, what do we do about it? I have to give you a remedy now. The remedy is essentially, if you have that kind of a fear which you should not, others they say, no, you should not, you have to start to give. As you start to circulate this money from you to go out somewhere else, you create a currency. And as the money comes in, it goes out. Then the water becomes clean, it's like a river. It goes into the lagoon, there is a way for the lagoon to let the water go somewhere else. Then the lagoon becomes clean, it becomes foul, the smell, and the stinking. After gradually you do that, to give, first is very hard, very, very hard if you're a stingy, big bastard, rich man. But as you start to give, you're going to get a feeling, not first time, maybe it has to go a month. If you didn't feel good, it's still you have to then give more. Start to give more of it. Till you feel good, because you see some positive things happen. And then gradually, 
just like it became a habit to collect it, it becomes a habit to give. And this then creates an ethics in you, and that ethics turns into an action of giving all the time to other people, and then you get back the love to come inside, to get rid of this fear. If you just keep putting in and not giving away, you're like a goni back. There's no bottom, you know, there's a bottom into it and whatever you throw the goni just hips, hips, hips on the top. There's no way out. You know, mankind should not be like that. So it's very, very important that uh, uh, we have to give. So I'm going to in my notes to see what I've written to say. So this passion, this is one of them, I explained, and then the fear that comes out of the passion. This passion towards the carnal desires, which includes uh, a lot of things. Now, there's another thing that can prevent love to come in the heart. And that's the desires that are not a spiritual. Now, there are a lot of desires in the world we have. I've written, let's say, if you have desires, all kinds of desires, towards things, towards the subjects that are materialist, even art, philosophy, science, politics, buildings, flowers, animals. When these things, they come in the place of your love for the true beloved, in this case, at this age is Baha'u'llah, you're going the wrong way. So the question comes that one of the boys, he was in the uh, uh, YouTube asking the Baha'is the questions that what do you mean by materialistic desire? Like, I should not love my wife, my kids, or shouldn't uh, have, have a house or a car? I am, after all, made out of material, so I have to have these material needs. So, if according to you all of these are material, material really, if I shouldn't have none of that, I can't even live. So what do you mean by material desires? In the Baha'i faith, very, very important that there has to be an order of priority. Abdu'l-Bah says in the very first chapter of the Some Answers Question, he says there's a priority, there's an order in this universe. The way things are written, we have to go based on the order of priority. Let's say, I'll give you an example. You're in your house and the house sets on fire. You got your little kids in their room, and you got a big bag of money also in the other room. What do you do? Everyone in the planet, even Charlie Manson, he would save his son, his child first, out of the fire. Then he goes back definitely for the bag of money. But his priority, anybody's priority, would be to save the life of the child. Then the money. Everyone says that for sure. Well, that's what I mean by the order of priority. There's nothing wrong for you to save your money, but there has to be an order of priority to save.